guys, Sullivan here in Philadelphia. So uh, I didn't get to a video this past week, but I'm trying to get into the swing of possibly two videos a week. If you followed my channel at all, then in February, I did a series of videos about how I was renovating my potager garden and had ordered a greenhouse and was getting ready to put in a shed. And then I had a busy couple of weeks uh, doing a wedding in the, the beginning of April. And then I came back from the wedding, uh, finishing the wedding and jumped straight into a bunch of work in the garden. And one of the things that needed to get done because my shed was on order is that I, I needed to put in a shed base, a foundation for the shed. And I wanted that foundation to also encompass the greenhouse, which won't be here for a few more months. So after doing some research and, and my greenhouse isn't particularly heavy and neither is the shed, I could do a gravel foundation, which is great because the plan for this property has always been to do a gravel driveway and parking pad. Uh, I got a couple quotes for contractors to do it, but, and while they were all very reasonable in terms of doing just the shed area, there was some layers of complication with potentially wanting to do some concrete footers at the four corners of the greenhouse. And um, while there are a lot of companies that will come out and just do a quick gravel shed base for you, I, I wanted something that was, you know, as per usual, more tailored to what I was looking for. And I, I had a good experience researching it, but I've actually built paver patios and gravel pathways before. Uh, this is the second house my husband and I have lived in and I had built a paver patio using E.P. Henry pavers at our previous house about 500 square feet. So it's really hard work and I certainly understand the cost which is primarily labor because it's just time consuming and exhausting but we have some other things that we wanted to do around here in terms of light grading and putting down a lot of topsoil and mulch on some areas so we can work on correcting our weed problem. So after all the research, I decided I was gonna rent a tractor. Uh, I live in Philadelphia. Uh, most people who live in the city, uh, in city-sized lots, even with, uh, gardens as large as mine don't don't have a lot of uh, agricultural equipment. So uh, I ended up renting this lovely John Deere 1025 tractor with backhoe attachment. Um, it's considered in tractor speak to be a subcompact, but um, since most of my city dwelling folk are not really into tractors. Uh, subcompact just means that it's, um, I have been likening it to like, it's like a Mini Cooper or a Fiat in terms of tractors. It's perfect for what I'm doing. Well, almost perfect for what I thought my project was gonna be while being small and lightweight enough that it's easy to maneuver around while I have a large yard. It's not tractor sized. Uh, it also has cemented the fact that my husband has long told me that I could not have a gator because we didn't need it. And even though I know a gator's smaller than this, uh, I really don't need it. Though renting this has been really fun and handy. So in my naivete, uh, we dismantled our potager. We took down uh, the vegetable beds, leaving the cakes of soil. Uh, and the tractor arrived and I hopped on it and after a little bit of a learning curve and practicing uh, using the functions, I quickly mowed down and leveled out the soil that was left from the vegetable beds and was ready to start excavating. And I was so confident that this was gonna go so quickly that I set up the camera and put on time lapse and uh, actually, I didn't even time lapse. I thought I was going to be done with it in a couple of hours. I started roughing out the shape. It's only 10, 11 feet wide. It's 24 feet long, 27 feet long. And, uh, and then I remembered that we used to have a tree here where I wanted to put the shed. And that this was the whole reason that I didn't build a building 
middle of the, the old Baudrillet garden. Now that tree died, that tree broke in a windstorm and was in decline and it's gone. And we thought we had the stump ground out. Um, so let me just show you where we're at uh, about eight days later. Yeah. And you're like, oh, is that it? Oh no. Look at that. This is what I thought it was gonna be. Digging down three to four inches here, five to six inches over there, but no. We quickly discovered that while the guys that ground out our tree stump did grind out what they could see, that it was massive, it was huge. Uh, so yeah, not, not a great discovery. And it turns out that the Mini Cooper of tractors is not equipped to handle 80 year old root crowns, root flares from a tree that we only cut down a year ago. <laughs> So while it may look like I'm putting in a shed with basement and swimming pool, actually based on the research and the location of really where I want the shed to go, I had to, <laughs> I started trying to dig out some of the roots myself. Um, and then we had to call in a, a, a specialist, uh, Super Scott of Scott Stump Grinding with his um, amazing, it looks like a battle bot droid remote controlled stump grinder and he came and took care of it. And now my task is going to be uh, removing all the large chunks of roots from the soil, filling in mo most of this with whatever, using this as filter and then compacting it down, putting down landscape fabric and, and doing the gravel pad. Now, the reason that I worked so hard to get the roots out and spent the time and effort to dig four or five times lower than I needed to go is because roots will eventually rot and I didn't want, I was going to all this trouble to put in this like perfectly level site pad that I didn't want to risk, you know, a, a, a root rotting and creating a low spot and causing a problem. So like I tend to do, sometimes I over engineer things or I overthink it, but since I was doing this myself for basically the cost of the renting the tractor for a month and now paying the, Hank Scott to come grind the stump out. Um, I, I still think it was worth it. It's gonna look, uh, it's gonna be exactly what I want and need it to be, and including being the right foundation for the greenhouse. It's just taking a whole lot longer. Um, and we're about to get several days of rain. So I'm gonna actually work on filling in some of this so I don't end up with a mud pit. At, at this point, I'm no longer trying to reach the center of the earth to remove tree roots so I can start putting things back together. And uh, yeah, uh, but that's how I spent the better part of uh, my gardening time for the last couple of weeks. I just was hoping that it, I would be further along. My shed is ready, so literally the moment that I can get this filled in and ready to roll, I'll have a shed and I'll be able to start putting things back together. Alright guys, so thank you so much for watching. Uh, there's the update on what I'm up to in the garden. Um, just digging massive holes, not even planting things. And I have so much stuff to plant. I had planned on doing this like whole ground cover experiment. We got some new trees. Um, I'm just hoping I can get this wrapped up because like, you know, it's a rental tractor so I don't have it for unlimited amounts of time and I wanna try and maximize the time I have with it before moving on to other things. But uh, hopefully after all this rain and continuing to clean up, we'll be ready to do a tour soon. I know everybody seemed to enjoy making a design out of the garden last week. So I think that's what I'm gonna do after I finish tractor time for today. Uh, I try not to do it too late, just to not disturb the neighbors since it's rather loud. 
But uh, yeah, so I think I'm gonna do a lot of cutting, try to cut some of the peonies and things that will likely get destroyed in the rain so that I can at least enjoy them and make a few arrangements and then uh, take them to a friend who's having a birthday party this weekend. So thank you guys for watching. I will see you soon. Bye.